Hello and welcome to another edition of another book review. This week I'll be reviewing Good Neighbors by Sarah Langan. I'll talk very briefly about the author, go into a spoiler-free overview of the plot, talk about what I liked about the book, what I didn't like about the book, who I'd recommend the book to, and finish off with what I'll be reading for next time. Uh, I listened to this on audiobook, so unfortunately I don't have a cover to share with you. Um, but Sarah Langan is a novelist, uh, I believe solely writes in the horror genre. Um, whether or not this is a horror novel, we'll get to in, in a minute. Uh, but for all um, intents and purposes, she writes solely horror novels. She's written, I think, three novels before this one. Two of them won Bram Stoker Awards, which is a very prestigious horror uh, award presti uh, given to works in the horror genre. She's also written several short stories and, and won awards for that as well. Uh, Good Neighbors is the story of a family called The Wilds. Uh, the book is set in kind of near future Long Island and is really the story about uh, this neighborhood turning on this family uh, for uh, seemingly no fault of their own. And the book is kind of uh, told in a really kind of cool way. Uh, one of the things I really liked about it um, is the book is told in kind of a, it's told like normal prose, but it, there's interstitial chapters as far as, at least on the audiobook. Uh, that were like kind of true crime excerpts of like true crime books. So someone years after this had taken place, I think the book is set somewhere in the, the 2020s. So I think maybe 2024, or 2025, something like that. But it's clear from the writing that years later, people are still fascinated about this case that they go back and, and write. So it's kind of akin to something like a, a Columbine or a John Benet Ramsey or something like that, where you have scholars who are going back and trying to piece together exactly what happened and why. Um, so there's like excerpts from books that are written in the future about this case. I thought that was actually a really cool touch of the book. And I think that also what was nice about it is uh, there are, there's a lot of characters in this book, but that technique allowed the author to kind of uh, almost do like flash forwards. So you can kind of see what happened to some of the characters uh, in the future without kind of breaking the flow of the story. So I thought that was cool. The other thing I think she does really, really well in this book is there uh, is clearly a villain character, and I think she does a really good job of showing the delusions that people will go to and the actions that they will take to uh, bring the world in line with those delusions. And I think that is pretty extra, uh, pretty well is really well done. I can't think of a better example of something off the top of my head where. She really makes you understand the villain, gives them a level of humanity, but also makes them kind of completely understandable. I think she did a really good job of that here. Um, I have seen, you know, I don't know if I would classify this as a horror novel. There's a lot of subject matter that's pretty heavy, and I'll talk about that a little bit in the people I would not recommend it to. But I don't know if I would classify this as a horror novel. I think there are definitely horrific things that happen. But this felt more to me like... Um, almost like a, a family drama or something that did really a horror novel, but I, you know, it may be splitting hairs, but I would not have classified this as a horror novel. Some things that I didn't like or liked a, a little bit less. The book, the premise of the book uh, is kind of a snobs versus slobs. The wilds are this family that's clearly uh, moved into a neighborhood that's beyond their station in life. And they found this house that's uh, kind of the, the cheapest, most rundown house in the neighborhood, and they, they bought it, and the rest of the, the neighbors, who are pretty clearly middle-class people, I don't think there's anybody in, in the neighborhood who are, you know, multimillionaires, but they clearly look down on the wilds and hold them to, uh, hold them to a lower opinion because of their station. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of snobs for slobs in, in any kind of situation. It's just not really my thing. Especially in a modern context, it didn't really, it didn't really play true to me. Um, so that was kind of, I was irked by that kind of off the bat. Um, there is kind of a supernatural undertone to the book. I don't think it's a spoiler. The book kind of goes to great lengths to kind of play it both ways. So it could be a supernatural. What's going on it could be supernatural, could not be supernatural. There's a giant sinkhole that opens up in the middle of this neighborhood. And there are reasons that are given excuse me, for it being a natural event. There are reasons for it given possibly as being a supernatural event, but the author, I think, plays it both ways in a way that I, I wish she had kind of chosen a lane and just gone down it. Uh, it would have, for me, been... Uh, the conviction itself, I think, would have helped the tone. 
which kind of goes to different places. And again, this is why I kind of shy away from it being horror novel. There are uh, there are parts of it. There, there's a couple of chapters where it almost goes into like a romance. There's a couple of chapters that uh, feel very much out of something like It by Stephen King. Um, so kind of tonally, it's all over the place. I felt that this kind of led to the overall execution problems I had with the book. I think the premise is kind of interesting. There's a lot of characters in the book, like I mentioned before. A lot of those are, are children, uh, kid characters. And it was very hard for me to keep track of any of them and doesn't really do a good job, in my opinion, of going to any kind of deep level with almost all of the characters. So it felt like there's just a ton of characters. And I think if she had parred that back to maybe three or four families on this block, instead of the like, I think there's six or seven families in, in all the kids and all the parents and all the different, it, it just made it very difficult for me to keep track of everybody and to care about any of the characters. I think again to the poor execution, there's an opening chapter to me that kind of pretty closely parallels a chapter uh, with uh, in Donna Tartt's The Little Friend in terms of what the author is trying to achieve in terms of like this growing sense of like dread and just like uh, confusion and fear and all these things. And I think just comparing the effectiveness of those two chapters, I know that that's probably not fair to Sarah Langan because there's very few people who write as well as Donna Tartt. But overall, there are parts of the book that I just felt like while the ideas, I think, were there, I just think that the execution on some of this stuff could have been stronger. I think the writing could have been stronger. There are some parts of it, uh, as she goes along, I do think the book picks up steam. And I think that the villain character in the book, I think, is clearly the best written character and everyone else kind of suffers in comparison to them. But I wish the writing had been a little bit stronger throughout. And again, this is one of the reasons that I didn't feel such a strong emotional connection to the work that I really felt a sense of horror or a sense of dread um, there. So this is again one of the reasons why I don't I don't think I necessarily would have classified this as a horror novel. Um, and those are really all the things that I uh, didn't care for. I think there's some other plot things that could have been more effective in terms of the, the characters and the history of the, the street. It feels like the author wants it both ways that for you to begin like in in res where it's like okay we're in this middle of the story but these characters all have a history with you, with each other and it's not really quite clear exactly how long that history goes back and and how those interactions kind of built to the present so i found that a little frustrating um so those were my frustrations with it in terms of who i would recommend it to if you're someone who likes stories of kind of like suburbia like a hidden suburbia uh, gone wrong I, I think the execution is very very different but to me, something like Blue Velvet is in this vein. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else off my head. Um, I've seen it compared to Little Fires Everywhere, and I, which I haven't read, so I can't really speak to that. But it's very much like the hidden side of suburbia and what all these people are getting up to behind the scenes. And so if you're a fan of that, then you would probably like this. I felt that uh, sometimes that stretches incredulity uh, in terms of like all these characters having secret lives and, and things like that. There's a little bit of that here. I don't think she goes overboard with it necessarily, but she she came up to the line a couple times for me. Uh, in terms of the subject matter, there's a lot of subject matter that if you're sensitive to, uh, it, it's kind of all over the book. There's, uh, there's sexual abuse, there's physical abuse, there's alcoholism, there's drug abuse. So these things that are, I think, sensitive for a lot of, there's child abuse. So if, if there's if you're sensitive to any of these things, then I think the book may be a pass for you because it is throughout the book. I don't think there's any parts where it was necessarily graphic, but just just for me, there's like an overall sense of unpleasantness of the book, and I think that that's more weighted in the beginning of the book and as the book goes on and as the plot kind of catches on, it becomes more about the plot. But uh, I'd say about I don't know up till about halfway, there's a lot of that. Because a lot of the character backstories are kind of predicated on these these histories of abuse and uh, how they take them moving forward is kind of a major theme in the book. So uh, that is uh, Good Neighbors by Sarah Langdon, uh, Langen, excuse me, uh, which I heard about on the, I'll give a shout out to the playlist because that's where I heard about the book. Um, I thought there were some interesting parts in it. I thought that conceptually it was kind of cool. I thought that the for uh, from a writer's perspective i thought the the way she used the interstitial chapters as far as like clips from future books almost i thought that was a cool way to give you 
kind of little flash forwards to explain where these characters end up, I thought was actually really well done and I thought was kind of a welcome change of pace. There's also a part in the book where there are uh, messages like Facebook messages or IM messages. I thought that was also a cool way to kind of break up the prose, but overall I didn't really connect with the book as strongly as I was hoping uh, for some of the reasons I gave. So that's uh, Good Neighbors and next time I will be finishing City on Fire. And until next time, please feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Uh, and I'll leave my link uh, below to my Twitter account if you want to see me there. Till next time, bye.